Okay, before I begin this video um, review of the interview or this re rebuttal to some of the listeners' comments, um, I want to make something absolutely clear. Look into my eyes, okay? You're looking, you're listening. I'm going to say some things which are not my opinion, but I am using them to illustrate the points I'm trying to get across, okay, do you understand? So sometimes I will be playing devil's advocate, and I'll make that very clear. I may even put a caption underneath something like, this is not my real opinion, or I'm playing devil's advocate here. But I do not endorse the negative things that I'm actually saying. They are only to highlight how bad the listener's comments are. So if we understand that, we can now proceed. Okay, as long as you understand that, we can go forward with this. possible to prove who was driving. Uh, I spoke to the CTC the other day and they're adamant that um, the police should have done more in their investigation um, when it comes to that. So it wasn't the case that they couldn't prove, it's they didn't manage to prove. But never mind. The insurance company of the car which crashed into him and um, he's here this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Just um, take us back to that day because we're going back quite some time really aren't we? Yes, it was back in 2014 now, um, and just a normal day on my way to work, on a Saturday unfortunately, and uh, yeah, hit from behind, totally unexpected, no warning, uh, sort of a bolt out of the blue really, and uh, life changed quite radically after that. You said there was no warning, as a cyclist my, myself, I'm trying to put myself in your position there, were you aware of this car getting closer and closer, could you hear it speeding up? Um, the interviewer here, Mark Dennison uh, and Sarah, they're both supposed to be, I'm, I'm guessing that's their names, um, they're both supposed to be cyclists themselves, that's what I was told when I went on to the radio station, but amazingly for a cyclist he says some, some interesting things. He sat behind me at the traffic lights uh, for a like, sort of few seconds just before we uh, started going around the roundabout. And there was nothing abnormal about it at all. I mean, I've been cycling on the road since I was 15, um, 13 now, so, you know, half my life, basically. And uh, usually when the driver is uh, agitated, disgruntled, or generally just angry, uh, you get some warning, either abuse or warning from the, the driver, uh, something like that, or revving of an engine usually is a favourite one. But this one, there was no warning at all. It was almost... Um, yeah, just totally unexpected. Yeah. So he, it was clear that he had accelerated. Have you slowed down as well? Because I know I, I saw some of the comments afterwards from people, people saying, well, it, it's shocking to see what actually happened. Had you slowed down at any point, or was it just him accelerating? Um, no, I was actually accelerating myself as well. I'd just come round the roundabout and coming past the front of the BBC here onto the straight, and uh, now I was trying to build up speed after uh, waiting at the roundabout. So um, I don't know what I was doing, sort of like in the low twenties I think just before it hit me but he, he must have accelerated quite considerably because he passes the other car which was ahead of him, him initially um, so in order to catch up he must have uh, put his foot down a little bit. So having been knocked off and having tried to start your physical recovery when, when you first watched that footage back what went through your mind? Um, initially I was relieved that I, I caught it on video um, simply because I thought well at least you know, this guy's going to pay for what he's done. Um, there's nothing, you know, I can't turn back the clock. I can't uh, make him rethink his decision. But at least he will suffer as a result of his callous actions. Um, so when I first saw it back, that was my initial feeling. Obviously, the, you know, I got more emotional about it as time went on. Um, there was more just shock and horror from all my family members, all my friends. 
ones that witnessed it as well. Um, but then, as the, the case sort of fell apart and as the, the CPS decided not to prosecute for any driving offences, you know, I look at it now as um, hopefully something that could be used to improve life for other cyclists, as it's uh, kind of failed to, to get me any kind of justice. It's interesting, isn't it, because I'm looking at some of the comments here on the BBC Radio Nottingham Facebook page. Tracy says, I'm a cyclist, and it's bloody scary on the roads today. Three front, three rear lights. High-vis code drivers just don't see me sometimes. Or maybe they're just plain ignorant. Is that part of the message now to try and get this whole thing of cyclists and safety out there? Uh, well, sort of from the, uh, the financial side of it, we need the government to invest in more cycling infrastructure. I mean, busy places like this, this morning when I was coming into the, the studio, there's a lot of cyclists around here and there's very little for them in the way of, um, you know, segregated cycle tracks and other facilities. Uh, but on top of that, we need an attitude change. Um, there are too many people out there who treat cyclists as like second-class citizens and they are basically, you know, playing with people's lives. Um, they, you know, they don't seem to, to think twice before intentionally intimidating him with their car. Um, you know, we would all try and save a life if we could. Uh, um, some of us probably would even put our own lives in danger to save a life. But what I would ask drivers is save a life by not intentionally endangering one. When you're out on the road, you've got a responsibility to vulnerable road users. They have no crumple zone, no airbag, nothing to protect them other than maybe a polystyrene helmet. Um, it's up to you to make sure that they don't end up dead today. It's got to work both ways, though, isn't it? I can hear people now saying, well, yes, but I've seen cyclists go through red lights, etc., etc. Um, what do you mean? And this guy, this guy's supposed to be a cyclist, and he brings up the whole red light issue which is such a redundant point. Um, I, uh, you know, why he said that, I just don't know. Um, I, I perhaps should have jumped in at that point and given a rebuttal directly to him. Because it's this, this continued um, use of this red light analogy uh, to kind of vindicate bad drivers or to justify dangerous driving towards cyclists. It's like, oh, well, you know, okay, maybe I risked your life, but some cyclists, some of the time, go through red lights. Well, so do drivers. I mean, I see as many drivers jumping red lights as I do cyclists, in Nottingham especially. I mean, in London it might be different, but in Nottingham I see more, no, I tell a lie, I see more drivers jumping red lights in Nottingham than I do cyclists. It's a higher percentage of drivers, so of course I will. But uh, it's just such a redundant point. It, to me, it's like saying, um, oh, well, you know, this is as extreme as it gets. Okay, this is my super extreme example. And you're probably going to, some people are going to be offended by this. But, okay, saying, oh, well, I'm justified in driving poorly around cyclists or being abusive towards cyclists because cyclists jump red lights or some cyclists have jumped red lights is, to me, the same as a a white supremacist saying, oh well, you know, some black people commit crime, so therefore I'm entitled to go and abuse and be racist towards black people because I am tarring more with the same brush and saying that all black people are criminals by suggesting that some black people have committed crimes and therefore we should treat all black people the same, right? That's a shocking and disgusting thing to say and it's exactly the same about cycling. If you're saying, oh well, some cyclists jump red lights, so therefore we can be intolerant, aggressive, dangerous and darn right abusive towards cyclists because some of them jump red lights is equally as crazy as a white supremacist being racist. Um, and I just, I hate the way he's used that because that's just reinforcing this stupid idea that a lot of people seem to have. And it's not helpful at all. And he's supposed to be a cyclist. And maybe he's trying to give a balanced approach. But there's being balanced and then there's just being darn right stupid. Um, I don't know. They have to fill in the airtime, don't they? So maybe they just say whatever comes into their head. Thank you the attention you've received and the number of hits. Sarah mentioned there, you know, over a million now. Do you make of that? Um, it's overwhelmingly positive. 
positive. Most people have uh, been very, very supportive. Most people have said similar things to uh, what I've said. And uh, like I say, hopefully it's going to be used to do some good. Um, it's not surprising it's got us a huge reaction. It's a, a brutal and vicious attack on somebody who was just going about their daily business, um, not breaking any laws, and uh, being a responsible road user, as most cyclists are. And what happens now? How are you trying to get justice? Um, well, I d for me, I don't know whether I ever will. Um, I think that, that sort of boat has sailed. But if I can use this, or if cycling campaigners can use this um, to improve things for other cyclists, then I would be very proud and I'd be very happy. Um, like I say, for me personally, you know, that boat has sailed on the, the justice front. Um, the next thing is the, the civil action, so maybe I'll get some compensation, but that was 14 months ago now, 15 months ago, so it's uh, still ongoing. Keep us in touch. Thank you. Good to see you today. Thank you very much. Uh, three minutes to eight the time. BBC Radio Nottingham. Video. If you do want to see that footage we've been discussing this morning, it's on the BBC Radio Nottingham Facebook page. And no, don't go there. Go to my YouTube channel. And uh, at the moment, uh, when Reginald is hit, you can hear the crash, you can see the camera tilt, you can see the sky, you can imagine what's happening as all that happens. And, and lots of you getting in touch about the justice issue here, really, about how if you hire a car and then you don't own up to who's driving it, how you seem to be able to get away with it. Lots of people incensed by that. So do have a look at BBC Radio Nottingham's Facebook page this morning. A couple of minutes to eight, the time Monday morning, something else that's in the... Right, there are a few more comments uh, that come up later on. I've got the time stamps for them written down. And these are the comments that I want to rebut. So we've got one at 2.40 and 2.15. It's uh, quarter past eight. Lots of comments as well about what you heard just before the news at eight o'clock from Reginald Scott. He's the guy, you'll have seen the footage on the BBC Radio Nottingham Facebook page. He was the guy riding his bike on uh, London Road just outside this very building actually. Hit by a car and some of the issues around that. Uh, Neil from Carlton says, cyclists, responsible road users, can't wait for that day to come. Uh, so, Neil from Carlton. So, you say that all cyclists are not responsible road users. You refuse the idea or you reject the idea that a cyclist can be a responsible road user. Okay, Neil, let's put it this way. Um, as a fact, I have a driving license. I've taken the driving test, probably like you, Neil. And uh, I currently have no points on my licence, I've never had so much as a parking ticket, and I often drive long distances to Northern and Southern Ireland, to Scotland and down south, as far as London, so the length and breadth of the country. And like I say, never had a speeding ticket, never been pulled once, never so much as a parking ticket. Okay, that's my first thing. I am a cyclist, so therefore I'm a responsible road user by the very fact that I'm a driver and have a clean license. Now, most cyclists are drivers, and they also have passed exactly the same driving test that you have, I imagine, if you are indeed a driver yourself, and by your tone I imagine you are. Um, and on top of that, because of the fact that cyclists are so vulnerable on the roads, we tend to know the highway code very well because our lives depend on it. And I would say that camera cyclists in particular know the highway code better than virtually everybody else on the road, including professional drivers. So yes, to say that cyclists are not responsible road users, to again say that they are all, in general, terrible, is completely false. And I would like you to change your mind on that. Um, there are not that many cyclists in Nottingham, and I cannot believe that you've never seen a good one. It may be the case that every time you do see one, you have a, an unreasonable or irrational hatred for them. And that's unfair, because like I say, they also probably drive a car. And if they do drive, uh, statistically speaking, the UK, a list of UK insurers recently um, released some statistics saying that cyclists are better drivers than non-cyclists. Uh, so there you go. Uh, perhaps it's about time you changed your opinions on that, Neil. Uh, Neil, different Neil says, even a higher 
that car, whoever hired the car, must be the named driver on the insurance. He's the one to chase. He's the named driver or whoever hired that vehicle. Terry from Beeston says Nottingham has some of the best cycle tracks in the county. And yet cyclists insist on being on the main road. They're as much responsible for their safety as motorists. They make motorists swerve around them and yet still contribute nothing to the road or cycle tracks. And one more... Right, Terry from Beeston. Um, I cycled through Beeston, and there are some cycle tracks in Beeston. Those cycle tracks are on the road. Okay, so these cycle tracks off the road you're talking about, that interests me because the ones in Beeston are on the road. Um, and we don't insist on going on the road. Going on the road is our right, just like any other road user. Um, on top of that, you say we've got some of the best cycle tracks in the county. Well, that might be happening now with the building of new cycling infrastructure in Nottingham, e.g. The, uh, the cycling superhighway. However, as a cyclist and an avid user of the cycle tracks, often um, through Ruddington all the way into Dunkirk and then Beeston, um, I can tell you that they are not particularly good. Many of them are like the surface of the moon, many of them are dangerous and disjointed, many of them hop on and off the pavement continually. So just having a look at the, the cycle tracks that the gentleman is speaking about, this is the University Boulevard, um, and the cycle tracks around the university are pretty good actually. Um, the cycle tracks in the university are pretty phenomenal. Um, but actually out here on the way into Beeston, which is, this is the way I would come into Beeston, the cycle facilities aren't that great. Um, these are the best cycle tracks in the county that the gentleman is speaking about. This one sort of starts here and ends here. And then if we come round the corner here, the cycle track continues on this shared use path, which is okay, I guess. It's not brilliant. Um, but then as we come round here, the cycle track ends on the, the pavement and um, it's onto the road from then on and this I mean that car there is virtually on the cycle track I mean why that car is so far over and look how thin that cycle track is That's, that cycle track there on that side of the road is l probably thinner than a set of handlebars on, a, on an average bike and look at where it's situated I mean Look at how bad the road surface is. Look how tiny the... That's a set of double yellow lines. It's like the thickness of, what, four, four yellow lines? And these are the best cycle tracks in the county that he's talking about. You know, potholes, on road, not really all that much protection against cars or anything like that. Um, you'd be very unwise to um, think that these would give you any kind of protection or afford you any kind of protection from passing vehicles. So I just wanted to show you this because um, I obviously make the point that many much of the cycle tracks in Beeston are not on the pavement, they're on the road as you can see. And they're not um, they're not really sufficient But again, see, look, it's all on the road. All on the road. Continuing on the road. This one's quite good, look. How, how do you get onto that one, then? You have to mount the curb there, come round the side, and then you've got a little bit of protection there, which is good. So yeah, plenty of cycle track, but it's all on the road. Not much segregated from the road in Beeston, and we're right into the centre of Beeston now. Um, I know, because this is where my girlfriend used to live. So I used to cycle in here regularly. And Beeston is not a, a bike-friendly town. Um, they, um, they're not terribly considerate towards cyclists in Beeston, <laughs> generally speaking. So there so, you go. Just I think thought you're I'd a like bit to wrong show. about that, unless you get on, care to get on your bike and ride them with me. Um, and two other comments that you make that lead me to believe you are some kind of moron. We make, uh, we make drivers swerve around us. If you're having to swerve 
like some kind of lunatic or take an evasive action, then clearly your driving is wanting. I have been driving for many years and I've overtaken many cyclists and I've never felt the need to suddenly swerve. If you go around swerving, then you're either drunk or very bad at driving, okay? We do not encourage drivers to swerve around us. We encourage drivers to indicate, pull out and overtake sensibly and safely. Okay, so would you please stop swerving because that's just ridiculous. Um, and final, the final point, the, the most idiotic of all your points, we contribute nothing to the cycling infrastructure or the roads as cyclists. Ha, huh, that's interesting. That's very, very interesting. Now, now, why do you say we contribute nothing? Oh, because we don't pay road tax. Oh, the non-existent road tax that was abolished in 1937. Right, okay, so we don't pay the non-existent road tax. Well, what else don't we pay? Oh, we're cyclists, so therefore we don't pay any sort of tax. Oh, right, is that the case? We don't pay any sort of tax because we're cyclists? What about the tax I pay on my vehicle, my other vehicle? What about the tax I pay on the company vehicles? What about the tax I pay for my company profits? What about the tax I pay for my income? What about the tax I pay on my, my savings? What about the tax I pay on fuel? What about the tax I pay on where I live? What about the tax I pay on food? What about tax I pay on clothing? What about tax I pay on going out and going to the cinema and so on and so forth and an endless list of taxation? I pay as much tax, if not more tax, than you do. Terry from Beeston, simply because not only do I pay for vehicles, I also, you know, with engines, I also pay for my bicycle and bicycle parts, which are all taxed. So to say that somebody on a bike automatically is not contributing to the system and therefore has no rights to ride on the road is foolhardy at the least and at the most completely idiotic. Okay, please check yourself, maybe think Maybe think for a second, and possibly a logical thought might enter into your brain, and you might realise that you've been a complete fool all this time to assume that a cyclist doesn't pay any tax. I mean, I've seen um, multi-millionaires walking on the pavement. Does that mean they don't pay any tax? I've seen many people in London who are probably investment bankers and, and various different other professionals, lawyers and doctors, and owners of huge multinational businesses walking. People walk, you know, sometimes. Does that mean they're not contributing? All these bloody people walking everywhere? Oh, all those pedestrians in Nottingham City Centre all just walking around? Off, oh, all just, you know, absolute peasants and vagabonds and scroungers, the lot of them. Everyone who walks, sir. Anyone who is not in a car, 100% of the time, is basically just getting a free ride off the rest of us. Blah, 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 blah. Yes, you know, sound, this is how idiotic you sound to me. Okay, so again, just think for goodness sake, Terry from Beeston. <sighs> so I'm a motorist that would respect cyclists more if they respected the rules of the road. They've only got themselves to blame, really? Even despite everything you've seen and heard? Okay, not sending message A1 triple. Right, that was Jill from Besswood. Hello, Jill from Besswood. I'd really like to meet you, Jill from Besswood. Your comment just there, you said that you'd respect us more if we obeyed the rule rules of the road. Well, when I was hit by a car intentionally for no reason, I was obeying the rules of the road to the letter of the law, and I still got hit. You still have no respect for me? What about all the other cyclists that obey the law? You got no respect for them either? So your, your, your ultimatum is that you don't have any respect for us unless every single one of us abides by the law exactly and to the letter, despite the fact that I already do. What about drivers? So should I not have any respect for drivers until every single one of them abides by the law? Do you always abide by the law, Jill from Bestwood? Have you ever sped? Have you ever entered the ASL box? Have you ever overtaken on a double white line? Have you ever tailgated? Have you ever used your horn for a reason other than warning somebody of your presence? Have you ever flashed your headlights at somebody for an incorrect reason? Have you ever pulled over onto a double yellow line and stuck your hazard lights on so you could nip into the bank?
Tell me, Jill from Bestwood, have you ever done any of those things? And finally, and possibly yours is the very worst comment of all, and I would say this. You said we only have ourselves to blame. So you say the person who is to blame for being hit by the car on that fateful day when that guy in that Volvo decided to mow me down in cold blood, you're saying I have myself to blame. That is what your comment basically states. You say cyclists are to blame when they get hurt. That's just what you've said. Okay, that was your comment. We only have ourselves to blame. Now, if I can play devil's advocate for just a second, Jill from Bestwood, I take it you're a woman, Jill from Bestwood? Okay, so if I was to say to you, Jill from Bestwood, you know when women get raped, yeah? And they're wearing short skirts or low-cut tops. Do you know what? They've only got themselves to blame. Because let's face it, if they hadn't been wearing such revealing clothing, they wouldn't have been raped, would they? So all women who wear short skirts and get abducted and forcibly raped, it's their fault. Can you now see how stupid your comment is? You basically said the same thing. You basically said, if a cyclist on the is on the road and they get injured, it's their fault because they chose to be on the road, just like a woman can choose to wear a short skirt. And what you're saying is, a cyclist who chooses to ride on the road deserves to get injured. And my retort would be, if I was the devil himself, I would say, ah, oh, well, any woman who chooses to wear a short skirt deserves to be sexually abused. Now, of course, I don't believe that. Of course, that is abhorrent, and of course, that is disgusting and wrong, just like your comment. So Jill from Bestwood, please think. Thank you Jill from Bestwood. I do hope I never have to be on the road when you're driving. Do we have any more comments, I wonder? Let's have a look. I literally knocked him off his bike. You can hear the crunch, which is just, it makes you shiver. And you can see Round the, two. The, the sky as the cyclist falls off and hits the ground. And the interesting thing is that this person wasn't prosecuted for dangerous driving because it was a hire car and it was difficult to get anybody to admit who was driving. So you can have a look at this and uh, see what you make of it. You were hearing from the cyclist himself just before 8 o'clock, but lots of you talking about this today. Mm. Uh, this from Peter in Lady Bay. I cycle and drive not at the same time. Uh, yet every day I see cyclists go through red lights. When I cycle, I always obey the rules of the road. Why can't all cyclists do the same? It's a, it's a good point. Why can't all drivers do the same? How many drivers this year have been caught speeding? Why can't all drivers drive within the confines of the law. Why can't they do that? You know what we should do? We should ban all drivers because some drivers choose to break the law. Yet every day I see cyclists go through red lights. When I cycle, I always obey the rules of the road. Why can't all cyclists do the same? It's a, it's a good point. I... It's not a good point. It's a vapid point. It's a silly point. You could say the same thing about drivers. When I drive, I obey the rules of the road, so why can't all drivers do the same? You see? It can be thrown back at drivers in exactly the same way. And I find it very hard to believe that a cyclist would make that comment, quite frankly. Um, but, okay, we'll go back to red lights again, because this clearly is one of the favourite topics of anti-cyclist people. That's why I believe this guy isn't actually a cyclist like he professes to be. He's a, probably a fat, balding, overweight individual who once in his life sat on a bicycle and therefore decided that that makes him a cyclist. Um, as many people are, like sometimes people who shout out their windows at me, I cycle too, you know. I think if you got on a bicycle, you'd bloody, bloody well break the thing. Yeah, let's talk about, let's talk about red lights, shall we? Okay. What happens when a cyclist jumps a red light? So, cyclist comes to the red light, looks both directions, nothing coming, goes through. Okay, no penalties there then. What happens when a driver jumps a red light? Driver sees it's going amber, floors it like crazy, goes through on red, and potentially runs the risk of killing many people. Whereas a cyclist only runs the risk of killing themselves. 
So there is a lot more to be said for drivers jumping red lights than there are cyclists. At the end of the day, who's the cyclist going to kill? Himself. Okay? And I feel sorry for the person who has to kill that cyclist as a result of that individual stupidity. I don't jump red lights and I don't endorse anybody else doing it. But at the end of the day, who's the cyclist going to hurt? 99.99% .99 of the time, it's going to be the cyclist. When a driver jumps a red light, and they do it as often and as frequently and about five times as quickly as a cyclist, they stand a chance of killing many people, whether they be pedestrians, other drivers, coach loads of children, who knows. So if you really want to go back to the red light thing again, yeah, stop drivers from jumping red lights first, then we'll talk about cyclists. But again, not all cyclists do it, and your comment there, Peter, is just simply tarring everyone with the same brush. Completely wasted comment, inane comment, vapid and stupid comment. Not worth our time. Yeah, I've said time and time again, I don't like, you know, all cyclists being tarred with the same brush, but I, I see that as what I like to think when I cycle, I play within the rules myself.